good of them that love him, for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. An address physical services 106 9th row Q in Johannesburg. My number is plus 27 82 456 9264. You shall surely be blessed. May God bless you and I look forward to receiving you. Amen. These things emanate from the heart. From the fullness of the heart, the man speaks. Every issue of heart is in the mind. And so anxiety is not, you know, is not new. And that's why I say we have to suppress it. And that's what we have been hearing. That's what I've been preaching. Amen. And this morning, uh, we're going to look at another segment. Before we go into the full scale of today, I have been sharing on how we suppress anxiety. I have described, defined what anxiety is. One of those ways by which we suppress is firstly, you know, for us to know who we are to have self-awareness is one of my first points. To have self-awareness. We look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 or 8. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything in prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. It's one of the ways by which we suppress it. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but put everything into prayer. And the peace that the world do not have, you will have it. You will be able to think through the challenges and confusions of this world. Again, I mentioned, how do we suppress anxiety? Is for us to trust the word of God. Because most often the information which puts us into anxiousness or causes the anxiety in us is the information from the world. Report. Maybe it's a doctor's report. Economic report. Bad news. Those things causes us to have this anxiety. How would it be solved? But when you learn to trust in the word of the Lord, you will learn to have peace. You can go about your business in the midst of chaos. You can trust God for what is lacking that is able to provide. You can run your race with grace. Remember, the Bible says that some trust in their horses and their chariots, but we shall trust in the name of the Lord. We look at Psalm 119, verse 130. The word of the Lord gives light, gives understanding to the simple, to the humble. And those are the ways by which we suppress anxiety. And I also mentioned that being anxious is different to being ambitious. You can be ambitious because ambition is about the future. It's about the dream you want to accomplish. But when you work with your ambition with anxiety, you may break certain things that shouldn't be broken. You may do things that shouldn't be done as a child of God. So we must understand those differences. Again, we looked at how do we suppress this anxiety. I mentioned 
that we must seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Because all what causes anxiety are mostly the things that is coming from outside. Those things that we need. Those things we want to achieve. The pressure we receive in this life. The pressure. Career pressure. Business pressure. Marriage pressure. Family pressure. And then we want a whole lot of things. We want God to do a whole lot of things. But we do not want to seek the kingdom of God where everything has been prepared. And we looked at Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. They seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Even your ambition shall be added unto you. That's how it is. They seek the kingdom. So we're able to overcome it. We're able to overcome it. Your, your sickness will surely be taken away when you seek the kingdom and his righteousness. And righteousness is also includes you believing what God has done. Believing what Jesus has accomplished over 2,000 years ago. Therefore, we say, you can suppress your anxiety when you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added unto you. Again, we said, how do we suppress anxiety? The last one was, to suppress your anxiety, you must be filled with the joy in the Holy Ghost. You must be filled with joy in the Holy Ghost. And the joy in, in the Holy Ghost gives you the revelation of Christ. Gives you the revelation of his word. The joy of the Holy Ghost gives you that confidence. Gives you the joy of salvation. And so these are the ways by which we can quench this anxiety. Anxiety for money. Anxiety for things of this world and the material things, the mundane things of this world. You remember when we studied the book of Matthew, Jesus was teaching them and he referred them to, to uh, uh, the beds of the hair, the sparrow, the grass, which wakes up to do nothing. He said, yet the almighty God takes care of them because he knows. He said, how much you how much more you? Because if we don't understand the anxieties of life, we cannot serve God. We cannot serve God. And so the joy in the Holy Ghost brings you into the reality of the kingdom of God on earth or the kingdom of heaven on earth. It brings you into that reality. It brings you into that reality. You live in the reality of God. And this joy is given to you by the Holy Ghost. It's a feeling of conviction because the Holy Spirit, we're, we're going to deal with it again. I don't think this year I have not done the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the personality of the Holy Spirit. I have not taught on that. You know, this lockdown has locked so many things up, but we need to go back there. The personality of the Holy Spirit. And when you understand the person of the Holy Spirit, you can understand the gifts that he brings. You can understand where he works. You can understand the peace of the Holy Spirit. And so joy in the Holy Ghost is so important for you to have to suppress your anxiety. What puts you in that, under that pressure? You must understand is the one that makes you to understand that all things have been given to you richly to enjoy. And so, we look at that. The Holy Ghost brings peace. When John the Baptist, according to the Gospel of Matthew, baptized them with water for the forgiveness of sins. And he said to them, that there is one coming who is higher than I, whose sanders I'm not able to lose him. He said, he shall come to baptize you with Holy Ghost and fire. With Holy Ghost and fire. It makes all the difference. 
It makes all the difference. And this will give you peace. And the same Holy Ghost, he said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. And that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. So when the world is in chaos, you will be in peace. Because the Holy Spirit comes to take his abode, make his abode with you. When there is no job, you will be in peace. Because you know that there is something God has prepared for me. So joy in the Holy Ghost is so important. And I finish up that. That the joy in the Holy Ghost, also, like, he brings you into that, you know, consciousness of the newness of life. The, your newness of life by the salvation. And we, I referred you to um, John chapter 4 about the woman of Samaria. Whichever way you want to see it, let me tell you something. It's not just the prophecy that made her to be happy and going about a prophecy without the Spirit of God is just an empty vessel. The Spirit of God came over that woman having encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember they started where there was an exchange of water. And she said, how can you give me water? You, you, you have no, nothing to draw the water. He said, how can you ask me for water? Being a Jew, me, I'm a Samaria, I'm a sinner. For Jews have nothing to do with us. But Jesus said, only if you know who is asking you, that you will rather ask him for water and he will give you the living water for eternal life. And, and that came over her. That was where the spirit was exchanged. Before the Lord asked that, okay, you must have had five husbands. That was the situation she was going through because she was in darkness. But now the light came upon her, the spirit came upon her, and she, she became joyful. And she went to the old town to say, come and see the Messiah. Who told me all that I've gone through? Who told me all that I've gone through in my life? The joy is, is the move of the spirit in her life. You cannot have this joy. You cannot have this joy. In the Holy Ghost without being a witness for the Lord. Without being a witness for the Lord. And if you are born again, you must understand the joy in the Holy Ghost. You cannot be born again and you are not a witness to what has taken place in your life. You have to continue praying that God grant me the opportunity, the revelation of being saved. And that's the joy. The joy in the Holy Ghost will give you the confidence to share the good news with your neighbor. That's what the joy in the Holy Ghost will do for you. It will give you the confidence. Because, you know, your soul has been arrested for the Lord. Yes, you may be struggling with one thing or the other. They may know about your story. They may know about your background, who you used to be. But this joy in the Holy Ghost will help you to express yourself in the newness of Christ. That's what it is. And so we look at all these, you know, all these uh, uh, ways by which we can suppress anxiety. The anxiety attack, sometimes the picture of our past will come to haunt you. The picture of your past will come to haunt you. To haunt you, the devil. You remember in the book of Joshua, Joshua laid a course on who will rebuild the wall of Jericho again. And I'm saying to someone that don't let the picture of your past begin to threaten you. You must dwell in this Holy Ghost. It will not cost you those kind of attack and you begin to see because they want to take you back to where you were. When you are in this joy of the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Ghost, you are able to resist. You are able to make declarations. And that is one of the things I want to bring out. Lastly on that, look at Ephesians. Ephesians 
chapter 5. I wanted to give that scripture when I was saying that you can suppress your anxiety by the joy in the Holy Ghost. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, it teaches us to, to be steadfast. I want to just get it right for you. To be steadfast in this joy that I'm talking about is the joy that brings peace, is the joy that gives you, you know, the, the, that feeling of belonging. There is no condemnation. There is no condemnation in this. But you must be filled with this spirit of God always. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. It says, therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is and do not get drunk with wine. Do not get drunk with wine. You know, many people want to kill their anxiety. They want to kill their burden and their depression by being, by being drunk or having whatever they think. You know, the Bible is telling you here that you must be wise in this grace that we have. He said, do not be filled with wine for what, for that is dissipation. For that is dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. I've, I've heard from so many drunkards who say they drink to forget their sorrows and they wake up to remember the same sorrow. And so I'm here to tell you that to, for you to suppress this anxiety and come out of the burden and the depression of life is for you to be filled with the Spirit of God. And the joy in the Holy Ghost will be your portion in the name of Jesus. And so, say be filled with the Spirit and then you know, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Can you see the way that sentence got finished there? You are speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. They're speaking to one another. So what would you tell the brother who comes to tell you his issues? What would you tell the sister who comes to you to, to narrate our stories, our disappointments? Are you going to tell her, no, you have to, um, what did they say again? You, you have to mirror. You have to retaliate or just find another level is that what you're going to say or you're going to share spiritual songs or you're going to share spiritual words or who would you go to who would you go to when you are depressed when you are full of anxiety you have this panic attack about your your sense of thinking because anxiety is, is, is like you perceive what is not real sometimes. Who do you go to? And so this is very important for us to dwell in the joy in the Holy Ghost. Now this morning, we're going to look at most likely uh, the last point on this series. Suppressing your anxiety. And this today... I want to talk about deactivating your anxiety by praises unto God. Deactivating or suppressing your anxiety by being filled with praises. 
or raising praises unto God, singing hallelujah unto God, singing and proclaiming his name, magnifying his name. That is what we want to talk about this morning and we're going to sing and we're going to dance. Amen. I got some videos that I will ask Edmund to play because I also want the choir also to, to, to sing unto them because nobody sings to them. So they will also sing into it. I sent some four songs. Some of them I've got the video myself, what I use, what I play. It's so important for you to understand the place of praise. You must understand the place of praising the Lord. And so this morning we want to say we can deactivate our anxiety. Those mood that runs our life. The mood. You know, you suddenly find yourself in certain mood you can't explain. And then sometimes you might say the devil is attacking you. But I want to tell you it may not be the devil those are physical symptoms of anxiety. Those are physical symptoms of anxiety. But I want to say that by praising the name of the Lord, you can come alive again. In the name of Jesus. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30 verse 19, I saw a word, I remember this word. Jeremiah 30 verse 19, I'm very precise. I'm very precise. It says, from them we proceed thanksgiving. From them we proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of those who celebrate. Hallelujah. And the voice of those who celebrate. It says, and I will multiply them and they will not be diminished. I will also honor them and they will not be insignificant. But the point here is that, is that out of them we proceed thanksgiving. And their voice shall be with thanksgiving. Their voice shall be those voice of those who celebrate. Even in the midst of chaos, they celebrate the name of their Lord. Before the Red Sea, you have to call upon the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we need to understand this. In Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord. God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. This is the word of the Lord. Which must be a song in your heart. That's what Jesus has come to do. That's what he recounted for us in the gospel of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. And he says here verse 2. To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. The three says to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a gallant instead of ashes. A gallant may be a beauty. Giving them a beauty instead of ashes. The oil of gladness instead of money. The oil of gladness is the oil of praise. Is the anointing for praise. Is the spirit of praising him. When you find yourself in any situation that looks as if you don't have control, your praise can bring you back into control. Your praise can bring the presence of the Lord to you in abundance. In the name of Jesus. He said, to the oil of gladness instead of money. He said, the mantle of praise instead of the of a spirit of fainting. He said to grant those who mourn in Zion the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. What is a mantle? A mantle is also a garment. He said a garment of praise instead of the spirit of fainting. 
He said, so they will be called books of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he may be glorified. Hallelujah. That he may be glorified. This praise that I'm talking about, this praise that I'm talking about is not the praise of pretense. It's the praise of the one who trusts in his Lord. Praise is not for pretense. Praise is not, is not for, for, for a singing to, to, you know, to let your enemy hear you. Praise is your personal devotion. It's your personal devotion. And you need to learn to praise the name of the Lord. Therefore, praise induces God's attention. It induces the God's attention. And then you will see the miraculous things. You will see deliverance coming. You will see deliverance upon your life. The Spirit of God is activated in the midst of praise of his people. The Spirit of God is activated in the midst of the praise of his people. That's how powerful praise is. That's why the devil loves to shut down the avenue of praise. He loves to shut down the mouth of praise. But Isaiah has already said with the coming of our Lord that those who mourn in Zion shall be given the oil of praise. They shall be given the garment of praise. And that's who you are this morning. And forevermore in Christ. In the name of Jesus. That's the, this praise activates the spirit of God among his people. When there, the, when, when there is an issue, when there is, you know, I remember one of the well, one of my testimony of praise was that when we had Oren, who was born at six months, for nine, almost two years she could not work. One of the one one of the the fellowship where we were having in the house, we were doing praises, and I saw the girl stood up running around. Somebody who, are, who only works with her knees at almost two years old, we spent money on physiotherapist every day. On today, I said, no, I'm not giving this anymore. One of the fellowship was when she stood up and she was running around. Praise can do wonders. In the midst of your challenges, you must learn to praise him. In the midst of crisis, you must learn to praise him and it will arise for you. There is a song that says, arise, arise, arise. Arise. Hallelujah. We're going to get there. I, I'm, I want to share the word. And then we're going to play some music. Hallelujah. God is not sleeping. Hallelujah. God is not sleeping. That's what Psalm 121 says. You know, he said, he say, where, 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 where would I go? He said, where, where shall my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. From the God of Israel. We need that slumber, not sleep. So, your, your praise wakes up God, the Spirit of God. Wakes him, wakes, gives, brings his attention to your life. Because he does not sleep nor slumber. But it arouses his presence. Anxiety can be suppressed by uttering praises of the promises of God. I said, you know, your anxiety can be suppressed when you utter praises, praises that express the promises of God. There's a song that says, Jehovah Jireh, my provider is able before me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider is made, is prepared for, sufficient for me. I mean, those are praises in the midst of nothing. That when you raise such praises, help will come. Supplies will come. Favor will come. In the name of Jesus. Because we're in such a, 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 an environment where everyone is about themselves. But God is for you. And for everyone who call upon his name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
You need to thank him in your praises. Thank him for the work of the Lord Jesus on the Calvary. How he conquered death by resurrection power of the Holy Ghost. These are what praises does. Now, let's look at this praise. What is praise? Understand that praise is offering word of homage. Offering word of homage. As an act of worship. That's what praise is. Praise is an expression. Is an expression. Praise. Your praise is an expression. You can even write your own song. When you have revelation of his promises. You can put together your own song that will become your praise. Because anxiety is a nervous situation. With it, symptoms. Symptoms like sweating. Symptoms like, like fast heartbeats. With panics or panic attack. And then they said it results in some display of mental disorder. So it's a, it's a neurological issue. There are neurological divergences, they say, in situations like this. You don't have to be among those divergences. You need to live in the free spirit of the Holy Ghost. Where there is the presence of the Lord, there is a freedom. Where there is a spirit of the Lord, there is a freedom. So praise puts you in the spirit. And therefore you gain your freedom from whatever that you may be thinking. For whatever, from whatever that may be bothering your mind, you will not be subject again to that yoke of pressure. In the name of Jesus. As the year draws close, as the year draws close, there may be some things that does not come through for you. Either in your career or business, either in ministry, those things have not come through. Don't let that depress your faith. Don't let it depress your faith. What has not come through this year, the year is still, is still full of days, but don't let it depress your faith. Your praise will put you back into that, that trajectory of faith which you began in January of this year. I said your, your praise will put you back, put you back into that faith. The trajectory of faith by which you began this year, you cannot drop your faith. Praise will put you back onto that trajectory in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. We need to learn to praise the name of the Lord. We need to learn to praise the name of the Lord and praise him. We need to draw his attention by our praise. So activating praises with thanksgiving indicates you still trust him. You trust him to finish well this year. I trust him to finish well this year. And my praise reflects that in the name of Jesus. So, we, by praise, we magnify the name of the Lord Jesus. We magnify the name of the Lord Jesus. That's what our praise does. The name that is above all names. We magnify his name through our praises. The name of Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 9, it says, For this reason, also, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. The name which is above every name. So what could be the name of the circumstances that makes you to live with anxieties of life, anxiety of your needs, anxiety of the breakthrough you are, you are praying for, those things that does not give you rest. They must have names. Once they have name, you have a greater name. And you need to praise that name that is above all names. And they shall be under your feet. Whatever that you are apprehensive about, praise can suppress it. Praise can give you back your confidence. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we, we, the world is full of worries. 
Families are full of worries. How are they going to meet up? How are they going to pay this? How are they going to pay that? They're worried about the children. What's going to be their future? But have you committed them to the hand of the Lord? Because what you commit into his hands, his hand will carry them through. I say his hand will carry them through in the name of Jesus. So therefore we are saying today, we need to praise the name of the one who is above and mightier than any problem. That's what our praises, praises do for us. He arouses the living God, the mighty hand of God. You know, just as we have the earthly kings, the, the, the incoses, the orbs, the kings, what makes them to arouse and their heads swelling is the praises of their people. Is the praises, the homage they pay to them. Therefore, we have a living God. We have a father that is above all fathers. Let us learn to praise him. Let us learn to praise him. And we will see his mighty hand in the name of Jesus. And I pray today, may the Lord be aroused by the voice of your presence in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Book of Psalm 66 verse 4, it says, all the earth will worship you. All the earth will worship you. And we sing praises to you. They will sing praises to your names. They will sing praises to your name. Again, when you, when you look at the psalm, it says there that your statute has become my song. Your statute, that means your word, has become my song. It's in Psalm 119. It says your statute, your word, has become my song. Hallelujah. So we are saying this morning, no matter what the state of your mind is, let it be transformed by releasing praises unto him. Don't magnify the enemy. Don't magnify the enemy and his attacks on your emotions. Don't magnify the news. Don't share the news. Where in this age of technology, people, they will tell you, share this, share that, share this. You have not even finished reading what you are sent. You have started sharing. You are contributing to other people's anxieties. So please, you know, don't, don't, don't just magnify some of the story that doesn't exist. Or even if it may be promises from government. Don't, don't be part of those who cause damage to people's emotion. Yours, you have not even finished managing it. So therefore I'm saying today, don't let us magnify unnecessary stories that attacks our emotion. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Let us bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That which is within you. The Bible says in Psalm 103 there, it says, it says, all that is within me. Let's look at it. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 103. Psalm 103 says, I will bless the name of the Lord. Psalm 103. He says, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. So learn to bless the Lord with all that is within you. All the word you have been receiving this year. All the revelation you have been receiving this year. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Don't be carried away by the anxieties of life and the need that is controlling your emotions. God, there are needs in our life that controls our emotions. It controls even our faith. It dries up our faith and then we begin to live in fear. But I'm saying, as you raise praises unto him, provisions will come. As you raise praises unto him, there are favors that will come. Unusual favor. So the psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless him with the faith that is within you. With the strength and grace that is left on your life. Use them to praise his faithfulness. I don't know what your condition is. 
I don't know whether you are in the hospital or you are just lying there or you are sitting there and you know you are not feeling well. But there is still something left in you. There is still something left in you. You can raise praises and healing will come upon you. In the name of Jesus, you can raise praises and knees will come before you. We come upon you in the name of Jesus. You know, don't you know what the book of Malachi said somewhere in, in, in Malachi chapter 4? He said, but they that fear him. He said, upon them the son of righteousness shall arise with healing on his wings, shall rest upon them. He's talking about healing that will visit you. When you raise praises unto him with the love that is left in you, he will visit you. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for everyone seated somewhere or seated here. That whatever that you are carrying shall be magnified today. To praise the name of the Lord. Your faith shall not fail. In the name of Jesus. What did you leave at home as a problem? What did you leave at home that is a burden? That is, that is an issue in your life. And pray, I'm saying today. As you raise praises unto him. The problem will be solved at home. The problem will be solved in your business. In the name of Jesus. Let us learn to praise the Lord. In the midst of chaos. In the midst of not knowing what will happen tomorrow. In the name of Jesus. Healing will visit your homes. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to take this word home. It says Psalm 150 verse 6. Psalm 150 verse 6. He said let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you see have breath in you? Praise him this morning. I said, do you see have breath in you? Praise him this morning. Arise and praise him. Arise and praise the Lord. With your last breath, he will give you life in abundance. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Your worries over your health shall be restored in the name of Jesus. Just praise him with the last breath that is in you and you will see the mighty hand of God. In the gospel of, of gospel of Mark, a certain man which we refer to as the blind man Bartimaeus. The Bible says that this guy he was probably at the outskirts of the city. And he heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he heard about the Lord Jesus Christ, he began to call upon him. He began to cry to him. He began to say, son of David, have mercy on me. God need to hear your cry. God need to hear your voice. He will not deny you of the mercy that you need right now. In the name of Jesus. And so Bartimaeus cried out. They tried to stop him. They said, stop Tula. They said, Mechuanu. They said, all kinds of things. He didn't listen to them. Your praise is the way you call the attention of the Lord to your situation. In your car, you, pray, you play your praise. In your home, you play it. In your phone, you play it. You know, yesterday, I was, I was online with... Uh, with, with the ministry, I am in Nigeria and we're having this kingdom summit. It says grace and influence. And then, you know, they, they, they said, how do we reflect the, 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 the move of the Holy Spirit in our life? And they, they ask, how can we use technology? How can we use technology to expand and to, you know, to magnify the name of the Lord? And so we are in the age of technology where you should not lack the source of praise. What am I saying? You have your phone with you. You have your iPad with you. You have your computer with you. You even have a radio in your phone. So with technology, God has made, has made us to have access to different praises. So you cannot lack. Tell your neighbor you cannot lack. You cannot lack. You cannot lack to, to gain the presence of the Lord. Praise is the power of the believers. Praise is the power of the believers. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20, the Bible says that the whole city, they laid siege against the people of God. 
they laid siege against the people of God. And so the king Jehoshaphat himself was afraid. And then they gathered together children and, and women. And as they began to worship the Lord, the Spirit of God spoke through Jehazel. The Spirit of God spoke. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that in the midst of your confusion, praise can bring insight. In the midst of your confusion, praise can bring wisdom. And so the Lord spoke through Jehazel by the Spirit of God and said, No, position yourself. This is not your fight. This is not your battle. You need to hear a certain word. And it's only a praise that can provoke it. That this is not your battle. It takes the praise of God to provoke it in your spirit. Jesus said to them that this death, this disease, this sickness shall not lead to death. It shall not lead to death. And so we need to understand the importance of this. And I'm saying today to some of us that don't come to the house of God. And you cannot open your mouth to praise and to worship. You can come to the house of God and you are not able to open your mouth. To praise him freely and to worship him. Even if there is no keyboard, you have your voice. You have your mouth. If there is no drum, you have your leg to dance. Praise the name of the Lord. No, let us understand what I'm sharing with you. We talked about Bartimaeus. He was shouting and calling upon the name of the Lord. The son of, the son of David had mercy on me. A lot of our praises carries the message of mercy. A lot of our praises carries the, the message of healing. It carries it. So why do you want to deny yourself when you already got it? Why do you go to and fro from pillar to posts looking for all kinds of things yet you have the praise. You have the word. Hallelujah. And I'm saying today we need to learn to draw the attention of the Lord. To draw the attention of the Lord where when we are depressed. When we are filled with anxiety. We are anxious about the report we are expecting. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise is the instrument of victory. Praise is an instrument of victory. Yes, it comes with all kinds of instruments. It comes with all kinds of items to play. But your voice and the word that you put out there, that you put into the atmosphere, subject every contrary atmosphere in the name of Jesus. You know, some two years ago, you all know when I had COVID and we were in the ICU and uh, I was praying from my uh, from my phone and uh, the one woman was there. You know, they mixed everybody together and 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 she said, oh, "That seems to be a nice sound." I just look at her like this. I just concentrate on what I was listening to. Because she didn't know that I'm bringing the presence of the Lord in the midst of fear, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of sickness. I'm bringing the presence of the Lord by my praise unto him. And it did not fail. It did not fail. Both me, I got healed. Even her who does not know got healed. That's why the Bible says that the prayer of the righteous has <laughs> been too much. Let's give Jesus a clap of freedom. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let us carry our praise with us. It's not limited to this church service. It's not limited to this church service. Amen. Let's carry it with us. We are in the age of technology. Let's carry it with us. Carry your praise with you in the name of Jesus. You know, you, you don't need an orchestra to raise praises unto God. You don't need an orchestra. You don't need a huge choir before you can raise praises unto God. You don't need to. You just need to trust God. And so you use your praise as the instrument of victory. Activating praises unto God in time of worries. Praising him draws his presence to your side. And you will overcome fear. You will overcome fear. 
Even the book of Psalms that you read becomes song in your mouth, as he has said in Psalm 119. Now, in Psalm 23, verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. Look at that. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. with me, can that be your claim? In the midst of your valley, can that be your claim? That I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's talking about the direction of the Lord. Direction and the, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit that directs you when you are in the midst of confusion when you are in the midst of fear, when you are in the valley that you cannot really explain. There are valleys of life. I don't know which one are you, but I know you are out this morning. I said you are out of the valleys. The valleys of your business, the valley of death, God will cancel the death for you in the name of Jesus. You know, while you are in the valley of death, you can rise into financial fortune. Just give him praise. Give him praise. You know, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. With everything, with prayer, supplication, and with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. He said, he will give you the peace which surpasses all understanding. You will find your way back to the top. I don't know where you have dropped from into any valley. You will find your way back to the top. I will find my way back to the top. My business will go back to the top. My ministry will go back to the top. That must be your word of praise. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Fear no evil. For God is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. In the mighty name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I want to close here so we can do some praises and some worship. Hallelujah. Lamentation chapter 3. Lamentation chapter 3. Praise the name of the Lord. Your hallelujah is praising him. Your amen is praising him. It's better than keeping quiet. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's what it is. That's what it is. The Lord is good. All the time, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Some, uh, Lamentation chapter 3, I'll take it from verse 22. He said, the Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. Verse 25, he said, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. That's what, what your praise does. You seek him with your praise. You seek him with your praise. When you go before the Lord, you go with praise, you are seeking him. Praise the name of the Lord. And this you will see the hand of God in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes we are in anxiety because we are waiting upon the will of God. Not everyone is on the same level as to determine the will of God. When you have prayed, when you have fasted, when you have sown seed, you are waiting for the will of God. You are, waiting, you are waiting for that decision that will be in line with the will of God. Hallelujah. Praise can bring you, can release insight. Can release insight. Hallelujah. And that is where I want to finish here. When I saw the story of these three kings in 2 Kings chapter 3, I saw that they were apprehensive. They were apprehensive. 
they were worried because the valley was dry. There was no water for the men of war. And there was no water for the cattle. And they went to the man of God in 2 Kings chapter 3. They went to the man of God, Elisha. I'll take it from verse 13. Now Elisha said to the king of Israel, what do I have to do with you? Go to the prophet of your father and to the prophet of your mother. And the king of Israel said to him, no, for the Lord has called these three kings together to give them into the hands of Moab. Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you, but now bring me a minstrel. A minstrel is an instrument of constructing, of accompanying the praise and the worship. And this bringing this to him changed the whole atmosphere. And I'm praying today that certain atmosphere will change. The atmosphere of your home will change. The atmosphere of your business will change. The atmosphere of your life will change. As you raise praises unto him, he said, when the praises go up, he said, the glory come down. So sudden glory must fill your life today. Sudden glory will replace your story of shame, your story of disappointment. I said, glory will change it. Praise God. And the man of God said to them, He said, bring me a mistrail. When the mistrail played, or the choir played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. The hand of the Lord is a spirit. The hand of the Lord is a spirit. In this New Testament, that is the impression of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he said, he began to speak, Thus says the Lord, Make this valley full of trenches. For thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet, the valley shall be filled with water. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise can do wonders. Your worship can do wonders. When you get to learn your responsibility with praise, in the midst of chaos, you will see wonders. The man of God said, bring me a minstrel. Construct the choir. Put them together. And as he began, the hand of the Lord rest upon him. I want to tell you something. If the choir are not in right standing, certain things cannot move. Certain things cannot move. If the spirit is not standing, certain healing cannot take place. We know how we have been doing it. And so I'm saying today, for someone who is worried about these things that is needed in your life, needed in the family, the family is not living well, that there's debt there and there, there is the lack of nothing, there, is, there, is no, there are no helpers. God is saying, as your praises go, he said it to us, as Elisha said here, he said, you may not see wind, you may not see rain, but this valley shall be filled with water. And I'm saying to somebody today, that may not be job, it doesn't mean your account will be empty. That may not be business, it doesn't mean you will not pay your obligations. That may not be a patronage doesn't mean you will not pay your bills. Let your praise change the atmosphere. Let your praise change the atmosphere. Let the word of your mouth reveal who you serve. In any worries, in any anxiety, and you will see the mighty hand of God. Let us rise up. Hallelujah. Edmund, can you give me that's one of the things I sent to you. We worship with this one. He said, Thelumoya. Thelumoya. Praise the name of the Lord. Thelumoya. Let's praise that this morning. Just begin to thank him. Just begin to thank the Lord from your word. Raise your praises. Construct. Construct your word into praises and worship. Just begin to speak unto the Lord. 
Just begin to speak unto the Lord. Lord, we just thank you. You are the almighty one. You are the great I am that I am. He is the mighty one in battle. He is the greater one. Let that be your word of praise this morning. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. We just magnify your name. Just praise him this morning. Just praise him. He's a good Lord. God, you are good. God, you are good. God, you are good. Just give us volume. Oh, yes, Lord. This is the Holy Spirit. He's going to do the work for you. If you want to dance, you can dance. The God of wonders, that's what it says.
just telling you about the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. one that says, there's one you will know. I compare this for you. Let's just look at that Chinwe. That Chinwe, what's that one? Choir, don't, don't mind me. I know you are there. Mercy Chinwe. It's an excess love. You know, when you are being neglected, there is an excess love. Just play that one for us. I don't know how to sing it. That Chingwe message. When you feel that what could put you in that anxiety, when you remember his love and his mercy, and you activate this, you will give him praise. Just let that be your word this morning. Your love is kind. Yes, Lord. Your love is patient. You fill my heart. Sing it to yourself. With so much peace and joy. That's our God. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. That's it. You're amazing. It's an amazing God. You make my life feel brand new. You feel it brand new. That's the word that you Jesus, right you love me too much. Oh, too much. Oh, too much. Oh, excess love. Oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, you too much, much, oh, excess love, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. You will feel my heart with so much peace. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, 
as a clap offering. Hallelujah. I'm just demonstrating what you need to bring around yourself. He's never short of mercy. His mercy is abundant. Hallelujah. And he's able to do all things. He's able to do all things.